Can I make a comment about the harmonization? Sure. You know, one, sure. one of the things that most people don't realize is that when it says that it's harmonizing with the rest of the world, it's not actually even doing that at all. Um, it's actually making it worse because it creates a hybrid. Uh, you know, if we really want to harmonize with the rest of the world, then why don't we just adopt the rest of the, the, the failed systems of Europe and harmonize like that? And, and I always say that, geez, you know, are we going to rush out to harmonize with uh, other people's uh, 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 human rights? Uh, I mean, it's just, it's, it's absolutely insane, you know, going down to, to failed systems, and you still have to file in each and every single country. It doesn't eliminate that. It just makes it more complicated. They should be harmonizing with us since our system appears to work and their system appears not to. This lady over here had a question. Oh, um, what besides the issue of funding and fee diversion uh, is needed for patent reforms? Everyone seems to agree that patent reform is needed, the only things that were discussed were um, or the end of fee diversion. Well, if I can start, and there are probably several opinions. Uh, the first thing we need to do is fix the, the patent office, <clears throat> the backlogs, etc. So before we get started on all this other stuff, let's take a system where people know the rules and the courts are quite active in straightening out problems. Uh, we don't really need major legislation. Let's get the backlog down to, you know, zero or you get your patent in six months or something like that. Um, Let's see what sort of problems uh, go away having the additional 3,000 examiners and having high quality patents and, and therefore not having fights about patents. Um, and let the courts continue to do their work too. I mean, they've been quite active over the last 20 years. And people here better than I could r rattle off the number of cases. But that would be my answer. As opposed to rushing in and changing everything, look at the, the central problem is the patent office, which has been neglected so long. Does anyone want to Yeah, add you know, to I mean I think I, I think, you know, the best person to defer to here is Judge Michelle. You know, the biggest thing that everybody is talking about is that, well, we're gonna we're gonna make uh, uh, this this patent system a lot more simple because you know all these it, it's stuck in litigation. Well, then let's talk to the and listen to the, the gentleman who understands where the problem is in the court system. So, Judge. <laughs> Well, the short answer to the question is that the Senate bill guaranteed access to the fees by removing, effectively removing the patent office funding from the normal appropriations process. The House bill reversed that and keeps the funding of the PTO in the appropriations process. So the end result, if the, the Senate accepts the House funding provision, uh, is that the patent office will only get whatever amount of fee money that the House appropriators are willing to give it, and my prediction is that they'll give it $2.1 billion, in which case the patent office will lose about a third of its funding, something north of $600 million, and it desperately needs every one of those dollars. So the Senate got it right, the House got it wrong, and now the Senate's being bullied into accepting the lousy uh, House provision because of fear that if they uh, restore the provision that 95 senators voted in favor of, that the House won't like it. And uh, I think the Senate should get its courage up and face down the House and make the bill work. Pat, do you want to add anything to that? Yes, I do. I'd like, uh, I'd like, the question specifically was, what else should we change? Should we change? Well, we should, until we solve it, until the bill solves those problems, it should, the bill shouldn't go forward and they should hold oversight. But I was uh, interested in listening to Judge Michelle's comments. I did uh, uh, very positively note that at one point uh, he was the staff director of the Senate Judiciary Committee and. I think speak passionately with the Senate defending his prerogatives here. <laughs> Valerie hey. Gatos and I used to work where you work, so <laughs> we, we, we have a very strong memory and affinity with your challenges. Hi, uh, Joe Mattal with uh, Senator Kyle. I had a question for you, Judge. Um, when you spoke about the Boehner-Rogers um, agreement on, on fee diversion, um, you said, you know, it's great if they pass an approps bill, but if they pass a a CR, you know, that's not going to work. Why do you assume that agreement wouldn't extend to CRs? The, the appropriators also produce the CRs. Why wouldn't they be bound by the commitment to pay 
the CR rather than the groups. Well, uh, the uh, CR would have to have in it a blatant anomaly favoring the patent office and no other agency or department in the entire government. And the pressure of the budget hawks is going to be to say, no, no, no anomalies. Not any agency, not for any reason, no anomalies. Why? Because if you have one, then there's the worry that you've opened the door and other uh, uh, people will fight for an anomaly for some uh, other agency. I, 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 I can't predict the future uh, with confidence any more than anyone else in this room, but I will be absolutely amazed if the CR uh, allows the Patent Office to spend the estimated $2.7 billion in, in expected fee collections. I think what's going to happen is they're going to be frozen at this year's level, and under this year's level, they've frozen all hiring, they've frozen the speed up program, they've frozen most of the programs to revamp the IT system. So they're dead in the water this year because of the current funding restrictions. And the House budget hawks are going to try to force those same funding restrictions for the next fiscal year that comes up in just weeks. So I don't see any basis for thinking that the House is going to uh, allow an anomaly in the inevitable CR. Well, I'd agree it's an anomaly, but you know they did commit to allowing the office to spend above and above the appropriated amount if they collect more fees. I, I just I agree it's different, but they they said they do it. You know. Well, if they were passing an appropriation, maybe, because they did put it in their committee-approved appropriations bill. But in the context of a CR, I just don't see there's any way that the House budget hawks are going to agree to an anomaly uh, unless the Senate forces them to, either by restoring the Coburn Amendment uh, or by some other device such as passing a sense of the Senate resolution that the patent office has to be fully funded, has to have unlimited access to all its fees. Not a year later, not maybe, not with subsequent permission of the appropriators, but <coughs> automatically, which is effectively what Coburn's amendment did. Then they would have to do that for all the fee agencies, like the Highway Trust Fund, et cetera. <laughs> the, the same demand would be made there. Same argument. Also um, implicit in, in we're going to now, but just to, I get the final word. Implicit in <laughs> Pat's remarks, in terms of, and Judge Michelle's, but in terms of the number of examiners they need, the computer systems they need, the expertise they need. Uh, if anyone thinks that even a fully appropriate patent office is going to be functioning well, I think they're dreaming. Under this bill, yeah. So can I speak uh, one yeah. more question? No, wait, wait, hold on. You can just to be clear. Well, can I, can I, can I, 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 I reflect? First of all, I'm not finished. Okay, thank you. Uh, the, you know, the uh, much is made of the patent office as being uh, self-funding, you know, user-funded. It's not the DMV. It uh, serves a societal function. If it if it's functioning properly, and we have a patent system that's functioning properly, it creates jobs for many millions of Americans. It advances our society. It does what the founders intended it to do. It cannot do that on the fees that it raises now. Unless it s sends fees through the roof, and we didn't discuss about special fees allowing you to skip ahead in the line and pushing back the smaller companies that the Venture and Angel uh, Capitalist Fund. Uh, in my opinion, uh, the Patent Office needs to come out of judiciary. It needs to go into the science and technology budget. It can keep its fees, but it needs more because it needs appropriated funds to actually function as smoothly as it should in this fast-paced technology world uh, and to get the patents out there so people can capitalize on them, commercialize them uh, before the technology has been surpassed. Uh, so the, you know, we can argue all day about sense of the Senate resolutions and concurrent resolutions and other things that have been proposed, uh, but th this bill is not uh, going to fully fund the patent office. It's not going to be functioning the way it should. Can I add a little bit yeah. to, uh, in response to your question? Um, there's uh, the Innovation Alliance, which opposes this bill, um, has uh, put out a release, and I'll, I'd just like to read the first three sentences of it, and this is linked from my website. Um, uh, it's the, the, the topic is called, Why HR 1249 Will Not End Fee Diversion. 
Happy anniversary. 11 years ago today, the Appropriations Committee beat back a floor amendment that sought to address patent fee diversion. Here's a page from the Congressional Record from June, 3rd, uh, uh, June 23, 2000. Uh, the floor amendment was opposed by the then CJS subcommittee chairman who assured the House, quote, the fees that are generated by the Patent Office are not used for any other agency or any other purpose. They remain in that account to be used in succeeding years. We are not siphoning off the Patent Office fees for other expenditures, end quote. So since then, over $300 million has been diverted. Um, and so uh, th that speaks for itself, and, uh, and the, the information is out there. Thank you all for coming. You can, can I ask step, one more question? The staff will be around. You, you may come yeah, up you and can, talk. No, I, I want to ask this no, I, Go ahead. Judge, where are you on first to file? Should the United States move to a first to file system, whether it's no. bill or something else? I, I think it's a very close call. I, I'm told that the large companies that file abroad routinely already operate as if we had a first to file system and that therefore shifting officially to that system would not change their behavior. They already uh, are doing it. Uh, Steve, I think Steve first, has made this point. first to file has some disadvantages for smaller companies because it creates pressure, I think, no one probably can prove it one way or the other, to file earlier and more frequently as the technology is developed, which obviously adds uh, to costs of the companies that are uh, the most vulnerable and uh, the least well financed. Uh, so I think it's a very close call, uh, but even if uh, first to file on balance is more to the good than the harm, which I, I'm not prepared to say, but even so, uh, the gain there, if there is a gain, isn't worth the risk of wrecking the patent office and the patent system. Look, it, 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 I can guarantee you that if I went into private practice, I could hold up any patent for almost a decade in post-grant proceedings. It would never get to trial in the district court. Now, if patents as a practical matter that have any commercial value can be held up for almost a decade in the patent office before you get the court enforcement proceeding moving forward, then the value of that patent plummets. It's not enforceable for almost a decade. So, and what uh, do you think that's going to do to as investors? Of I'm course, the incentive in for investment goes down. So if the gain of first to file, whatever it might be, is marginal, which I think it is, <laughs> assuming there is a gain, uh, for, for, for the uh, harms to the patent system of post-grant review and insufficient funding, it's just not worth it, not even close. It's a big setback, not a step forward. And the idea that it's going to create jobs is a joke. Look, uh, to create jobs, what you need to do is take the 1.2 million patent applications that are on file that have been sitting there for years yeah. and clear that backlog very rapidly and very carefully. That would actually create jobs. But passing the bill is going to slow down the queue, not speed it up. So how can it possibly create jobs? And, and, and the quality of patents is going to go way down because if I'm an inventor, I'm going to have to, as I said, leave a breadcrumb trail behind me in order to fully protect myself. And, and so I'm going to file patents before they're fully, fully vetted out. So I don't know how that's not going to increase a backlog, and it's going to increase a backlog of lesser quality patents. It's just from all angles, it's just this bill does exactly